Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. I talk a lot on this channel about the power of passive investing, specifically into index funds. And that is because when you invest into an index, you're investing into a broad base of companies that have a proven track record and that are profitable. And one of the largest companies in our society was recently added to the S&P 500 index, and that would be Tesla. So now if you have been investing passively into index funds, specifically the S&P 500, you are now going to be a shareholder of Tesla. So what I wanna do in this video is break down in detail what this means for you and what steps you and I should be taking right now to achieve our long-term goals in light of this new news. So let's take our time, dive into the details, and jump into it right now. As previously mentioned, Tesla was added to the S&P 500. This is historic on many fronts because most people associate Tesla with being an electric car manufacturer, but they are much more than that. Tesla manufactures batteries, solar power panels, and they do a lot of data, so that's one of the most beneficial things they have as a company. So what we're going to find is that this addition into the index is actually not just viewing this as a car manufacturer because Tesla is already worth more than the value of the other car manufacturers in our society. They are a tech company Company that has a long way to go to be able to demonstrate their value and worth. So from that perspective alone, it is important to be aware of that this addition to the S&P 500 is significant. The way in which Tesla was added to the S&P 500 was very different. They decided to do this on what is called quadruple witching day. That is when the stock options and stock futures simultaneously rebalance on the same day, which generally creates a lot of market volatility. So adding into the fact that then all the indexes had to purchase Tesla stock on the same day was pretty interesting in and of itself. Almost up to $100 billion of rebalancing had to occur in order to get Tesla back into the S&P 500. And on that note, what we have is that when you purchase those shares, other shares had to be sold. So what happened is that other tech sectors actually had their stock sold, so that way Tesla could be added into the S&P 500. Now for yourself as an investor who might go into index funds right now, it's important to be aware of that when you have now, as an owner of Tesla stock, you own about 1.5% of your S&P 500 portfolio as Tesla shares. And that means that you're going to benefit from their growth over time, but the S&P 500 is a long, stable growth trajectory overall. So if you really wanted to benefit specifically from Tesla on a very intentional basis, then you should really be investing specifically in Tesla buying their full shares. Now Tesla has had a lot of volatility this year. Their stock market, their stocks have actually skyrocketed over the course of the last year, benefiting quite a bit from all the work that they've been doing over the last number of years leading up until this point. As a matter of fact, a number of months ago, they even split their stocks. They went from having one stock go to worth five shares. I created a separate video on that, broke that down in detail. Feel free to check it out if you like but it's important to be aware of that now you will be an owner of Tesla stock if you invest into the indexes that I've been talking about for quite some time. So that should help the index continue to grow over time, but I know there is concern because people now are getting this shares of these shares of Tesla when it's worth its highest rate. So people are concerned that Tesla now coming into the index might lower its overall value. And generally, historically, when companies come into any sort of index like that, they might have a little bit of a high for a short period of time, drop off a little bit, but then generally begin to track the remaining of the S&P 500. So from that perspective alone, I think it's important for us to have the long-term view here that Tesla's addition to the S&P 500, although it's coming in at a premium price right now, is still very beneficial because they are a company that has a long way to go as far as what they can demonstrate their value and worth from technology. They aren't just a car manufacturer, they're much more than that. Now, I'm not trying to be such an advocate for Tesla because specifically that is something that you have to make a decision for if you wanna purchase their individual stock Stocks. I just want to let you know that I'm encouraged that they have been added to the S&P 500 because I believe that's going to benefit those of us who have a long-term approach and we're trying to secure our finances, have ourselves set up properly for retirement, and most importantly, be able to have things as streamlined and automated as possible. I'd much rather have uh, Elon Musk doing all the hard work of creating these products and then individuals such as you and myself can benefit a little bit financially from investing into them. One thing to bear in mind is Tesla's addition to the S&P 500 is pretty significant because they're gonna be one of the top 10 companies in the S&P 500, joining the likes of Apple, Facebook, Google, and all the other companies that already sit up there, and they're already gonna be higher than some of the household names like Berkshire Hathaway. So it is pretty interesting to see this come to fruition, and those who've been on the outside talking about Tesla for years are really vindicated in, in act, expressing their interest in wanting people to get into this company. So it's really neat to see this come to fruition right now, and as individuals, 
angels who are investing in the index funds. I think it's a very exciting time right now. And if you are someone who is curious about investing, hasn't taken the steps yet to invest, my encouragement to you is to continue to look at areas that you understand and you feel comfortable with that have a proven track record and history of doing so. That is specifically what led me into investing into index funds. Now, just for some context, I didn't invest during my time growing up. It's only been over the last couple of years and in doing so, studying the processes, looking at the track record, looking at the history and having that forecast a bit of the future has been helpful in determining where I place my money on an, on an ongoing basis. And where I found most comfort in doing so is being able to go into index funds, specifically into exchange traded funds through Wealthfront, which is a company I like to use. They're an online robo advisor, very intuitive, very automated system that you can do. So what I would encourage you to do is if you're interested in investing, it's important that you only do so when you're financially fit, meaning that you don't have any outstanding significant debt, that you're not having any area where you're uh, hurting on a financial front. So you need to make sure that you have an emergency established. You make sure that you do everything you can to be setting yourself financially for success so that if a rainy day hits, you're not going to be in a challenging circumstance. If you are financially fit and you're able to do so, then it's important to be able to look at investing. Now, if you have the ability to do lump sum investing where you can put a bunch of money in the market at once and you have the financial means to do so, if you're comfortable doing so, that actually can be beneficial. I like to do what's called dollar cost averaging where I continue to put money in over time, irrespective of if the market is up or if the market is down. I just continue to put money in and that is what allows me to have systemic long-term growth. Now, I primarily invest into index funds. I don't do as much into individual stocks. If you go the individual stock route, you're going to have to assess that a bit more. But once again, I would still have a long-term in mind because if you're trying to be a day trader where you're gonna buy a stock in the morning and sell it at night because it grows, I will tell you that is not going to provide you with the best results possible. I'm not looking down on anyone who does that. If you are someone who can do that and make that work, good for you. I just like to pr provide myself with more stability and more uh, peace of mind and doing so when I'm investing into an index, that allows me to do so. And now the individual companies that people wanna go after like Tesla are now in the index. So it's even better in that respect. So I'll put a link in the description for Wealthfront if you wanna check it out. That is just one area that you could do this in. There are other companies out there, whether that's Betterment or others that you might prefer. Furthermore, if you do wanna invest individually into stocks, you can look at Robinhood, you can look at Webull and do those kinds of approaches as well. If you wanna get free stocks, I actually have links in the description. You can check those out if you'd like. Furthermore, if you want another way to save money and actually have money kind of going into the stock market on an ongoing basis into a group of index funds where you don't have to think about it, it's just kind of an extra way of investing, look at Acorns. That's an application you can link to your debit card. You just put it on your phone and anytime you make a payment or a transaction, it will round up to the nearest dollar, the remainder of that transaction and invest that into an index fund. So just another way that you can look at it. These are just some basic principles that you can look at getting started if you want to begin starting the process of investing. Furthermore, if you want to invest invest even more strategically, look at doing so into tax advantaged accounts if you're looking at long-term retirement, whether that's a Roth IRA, a 401k, a 457, a 403b or otherwise. So those are just a few things to take into consideration as you're looking into getting into this process of investing. Now you might be asking yourself, will Tesla's addition to the S&P 500 cause the S&P 500 to grow significantly right now? And the answer to that is probably not. Generally speaking, when companies come into the S&P 500, they don't cause any sort of huge general market volatility as it relates to the long-term growth of that index, but it's going to help propel it forward long-term. As a matter of fact, Goldman Sachs did a study where they said it's going to generally create the same level of growth overall for the S&P 500 that they have seen previously. So it's something to take into consideration. This isn't going to rock the boat significantly. It's just a big step in the sense that it's bringing in a very tech-heavy company into a tech-heavy index, which hopefully is going to allow this index to grow over time because our economy is continuing to shift in more of a technological direction. So it's overall, in my opinion, a very good thing. And if you're looking to get into it, it's probably wise that you begin investing right now, irrespective of whether Tesla is coming into this S&P 500, just getting your money so that way it can work for yourself so you can achieve your long-term goals, I believe is most important. And I think it's always important to take a step back when we're considering investing and looking at what we're doing, why we are doing so. Now, the reason why I like to invest is not only just for the peace of mind, but obviously to have the long-term growth achieved so that I can have more time freed up to be able to go out into society and do things that are positive in this world. That's personally what I would like to do, to be able to have more time with my wife, to be able to go out and serve in community, to be able to make a difference and make a positive impact in other people's lives. And whatever it is for yourself, you probably have different goals than myself and that's totally cool. 
just hopefully if you have the financial means to do so, that will allow you to have more freedom and flexibility. Whether you wanna go out and travel, whether you wanna have more time, whether you wanna pursue another passion project that you have, whatever it is for you, I just hope that you can achieve it. And I hope by beginning into investing into things that you understand, not into crazy schemes or anything like that, will allow you to have more comfort and peace of mind to achieve those goals. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please like the video. That would really help the channel out for the YouTube algorithm, help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. In addition, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, do any research for you, so you can make well-informed decisions moving forward. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally, as I do everything I can to create content that will make a positive impact in your life by encouraging you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I hope you have a wonderful remainder of your day. Talk to you next time.